Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Opening Traps and in today's episode I'm going to look at the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Trap or the ICBM Trap or more officially known as the Tennyson Trap. Let's get started. So, it comes after we play pawn to e4 and black plays pawn to d5. This is the Scandinavian defense and the main move here by far is to accept the pawn, but we are not going to be playing that. Instead, we play knight to f3. This is the Tennyson Gambit and it is very dubious and what we're doing here is sacrificing the e-pawn for black to capture, which they will, they capture the pawn, and now that our knight is under attack, we play knight to g5. So, now we're attacking the pawn and black is probably not going to just want to give the pawn back, so the most common move here is knight to f6 defending the pawn. And while this is the most popular move, objectively it is definitely not the best. Uh, the best one is probably bishop to f5 uh, defending the pawn like this, and if they do this we can't quite do the Tennyson trap, uh, or even better is probably pawn to e5 here, just giving the pawn back because after we capture, now now they play pawn to f5 attacking our knight uh, we have to back up and after knight to f6 we really just do not have that much compensation for sacrificing the pawn and now we have given it back and we just kind of have a mediocre position so that's where the gambit is kind of dubious but knight to f6 most common move and now we play pawn to d3 here now we're letting them capture our pawn, but we're also threatening to capture their pawn. So if they play a move like pawn to h6, this is now a mistake because they can capture. And even though we have to end up uh, losing our rights to castle, we have regained the pawn and we have a big pawn in the center and we actually just end up with a completely fine position, which is more or less equal than anything else. So pawn to h6 does not really work here. They're pretty much forced to play the move, or maybe not forced, but the most common move here by far is to end up capturing on d3, at which point you want to capture back with the bishop. And if you have done this correctly so far, then you will have your queen, you will have their queen, and then you will have nothing but your bishop in the way on d3, and that is very important and integral to making this trap work. And now the most common move here for black is pawn to h6 which is a complete blunder. This falls right into the trap. If they play something else like knight to c6 or pawn to e6, then black is let off the hook and they can no longer fall into the trap. But pawn to h6, attacking our knight is the most common move, but it is a massive blunder. And now we win with an incredible tactic here. Knight takes on f7. A crazy knight sacrifice, and you will see exactly why we play this in just a moment. Now here, we are forking their queen and the rook, so they are essentially forced to capture the knight, and now, using this discovery we have against black, we win with bishop to g6 check. Not bishop to c4 check, I'll get into why that doesn't work afterwards, but bishop to g6 is the winning move here. We check black's king as well as reveal this attack against black's queen, and you see here nothing is actually defending it. And usually the king will be able to run back and defend the queen, but here cannot do that because our bishop here covers all of these squares. It checks the king, but it also covered this square. So they're pretty much forced to capture the bishop once again. If they don't capture the bishop, they will just be really lost here, but this is their best attempt, at which point we simply capture their queen. And now we're not overwhelmingly winning here. We are up a queen for two pieces, which after some time is completely winning, but you will still have to put in some work to actually end up winning the game. What you really want to be careful about here though, is that black here, and I'll go to black side for this, black actually has a counter trap against us that you have to be very careful to avoid. If you're black in this situation, then you want to play the move pawn to e5. What this move does is it opens up your bishop to move away, and if you're white here, what you do not want to do is capture the bishop. 
this is just way too greedy and now we actually are just completely winning here with bishop to b4 check and all of white's advantage goes to waste even though they're up two pieces here bishop to b4 check and they're going to end up losing the queen because now our rook sees their queen and their king is checked at the same time now if white plays a move like bishop to d2 then they are really losing here because we can trade this with check and then capture the queen at which point we're actually just up an entire piece here but if white is trying to not lose then they will play pawn to c3 attacking our bishop and you don't just want to capture this queen right away you want to take this pawn with check first that way uh you can get at least one extra pawn this is known as a desperado sacrifice they capture back and now you simply take the queen and all of white's advantage has gone to waste and at the end of the day you are actually the one that is up an entire pawn here so maybe not much but you've gone quite far away from completely losing like you were a few moves ago so if you're white in this position after pawn to e5 you certainly do not want to capture the bishop instead you simply want to play just castles get your king away from this bishop ever being able to check you at which point now this bishop here actually is under attack so they have to do something about it and they can never play a move like a bishop to d6 because that this rook here is actually just completely free and there is one more thing that i would like to teach you and that is back here why not play the move bishop to c4 check doesn't it accomplish the exact same thing? And the answer here is actually no. If they play king back to e8, then you are still winning here because you have a very nice bishop to f7 check, distracting the king away from the defense of the queen, at which point after they capture, and you capture here, you are once again winning. But the problem is they can play the move pawn to e6 in this position unleashing their bishop and you can see we actually get a very similar position to the other one so now after we capture their queen they can play bishop to b4 check they check our king as well as their rook now opens up we get the exact same pattern and if we play a move like pawn to c3 here then after they capture our queen and we capture their bishop all our advantage has gone to waste so instead you would probably play a move like queen to d2 here so after they capture now we can get the piece back but the problem is this is a completely equal material position and even though we are slightly better here due to this pawn being pretty weak we have lost all of our really big advantage we had when we were up an entire queen for two pieces so because of that annoying pawn to e6 move you have to play bishop to g6 check and not bishop to c4 check all right thank you so much for watching uh like subscribe do all that stuff uh comment down below if you want to see a specific trap and i will see you next time have a fantastic day